mighty, I'm hoarse from saying it. Do you want a white or a brown egg for your breakfast? Ask me nicely and call me Doty. <sighs> Doty, ducky, darling, honey bunch. Do you want a white or a brown egg for your breakfast? A brown one, Hickey. I have a gorgeous little pullet's egg for you. Don't be long. Hickey's our workman, and Mam has never managed to train him not to bang the doors. He's nice to me, and I love him. I even say it to the Virgin Mary, I love Hickey. She never says anything back to me, except once, and what she said was very private. It was when I got out of bed to say an aspiration. I'm always saying them. I'm afraid of hell. Bullseye! Come in! I'm here. Did you sleep, Mama? No. You had a sweet in your mouth, and I was afraid you'd choke if you swallowed it whole. Poor Mama. She was a great worrier. Put some butter on your egg to soften it up. Dada went three days ago with 60 pounds in his pocket. We'd never know if he'd come back in an ambulance or hackney car he hadn't paid for. Can I bring Miss Moriarty some lilac? Yes, darling. Bring her anything you like. Oh, you're the best mama in the world. <laughs> there now. Mama holds me close like she'll never let me go. I'm everything in the world to her. Oh, mummy palaver. There's a play on tonight at the town hall. You should go, missus. Maybe I will. What jobs do you have for me, ma'am? The turf is ready for footing and we mightn't get a fine day again. All right, Grant. <clears throat> Maybe he shouldn't go so far away. Your father mightn't come home for a month. We have to get on. I must feed the hens. I'll get the lilac from the back of the hedge. And take a little piece of cake from the tin for your lunch. Do you want me to stay home in case he comes back? Oh, no. Don't be silly. Get off to school. But get your cake and put your coat on first. It's warm. You have a bad chest. Will you come and meet me? Oh, why must you always be hanging on to me? Please, Mama. You're not a baby anymore. Please. I'll tidy up after Hickey's dinner and then I'll come down. Promise me. Oh, come on now. You better go. You're my best girl. Mama, you're squeezing me. Oh, go on now. Off with you. I'm always afraid of... Or he might come home and kill Mama. Ah, Kathleen, my child. Uh, hello, Mr. Holland. How are things? He's trying to sound casual, but I know perfectly well why he's waiting for me under the ivy wall. Mother, well, your dad is conspicuous by his absence. I see Hickey at the creamery these mornings. Everyone's grand, thanks. No. Would you allow me to convey you over the wet, winding road? It's not wet, and for God's sake, don't talk of rain. It's as fatal as opening an umbrella in the house. Is Mr. Gentleman away? Indubitably. Odd fish, Kathleen. Odd fish. Mr. Gentleman is a beautiful man who lives in a white house and plays chess in the evenings. Gentleman isn't his real name. His real name is French, but no one can say it. He doesn't seem to mind, though. He signs all his letters, J.W. Gentleman, so he must like it. Oh, and the voice on him. It's no more than affectation, if you ask me. He is French. What kind of an excuse is that? You know what, Kathleen? Many Irish people are royalty and unaware of it. There are kings and queens walking the roads of Ireland, riding bicycles, imbibing tea, totally unaware of their great heredity. Back your mother now has the ways and walks of a queen. Jack Holland doesn't dare come up to the house anymore since Dada ordered him out of the kitchen for putting his hand on Mama's knee. The wet, winding roads, brown bogs and black water, and my thoughts are on ships and the king of Spain's daughter. He's thinking up something for his column in the local newspaper. I was walking with a lady exchanging bits of goldsmith and column. So now... Trouble brewing. I'll carry those flowers for your morty face. See it soon. Baba! Oh, I got one more in the field. You've got terrible bad luck, Kathy. I know. She'll give those flowers to Miss Moriarty and get all the praise for herself. Baba, what are you doing putting that lilac in the pot? Those are my flowers. You're late. 
You're going to be killed, murdered, slaughtered. I'm sorry I'm late, Miss Moriarty. What? What are you talking about? Bob has gone and made me apologise to Miss Moriarty and she never even missed me. Now, we have great news today. Our school is honoured. You, Kathleen Brady, have won a scholarship. <gasps> Thank you very much, Miss. We won't do much work today as a celebration. Where will she be going, Miss? To the same school as you, Barbara. Wouldn't it be nice for you? Barbara writes me a note and throws it at me when Miss Moriarty isn't looking. So, you're coming to my school then, are you? I've my uniform got already. Of course, we're paying. It's nicer when you pay. You're right looking, Egypt. All I can think is that I'll be getting a lift in their car and she'll tell everyone in the convent about my father. Still, I know Mama will be pleased. Goodbye, Miss Moriarty. Have a lovely afternoon. Goodbye, Barbara. Oh, would you look at the state of you? What's you want a coat and a scarf for? It's the month of May. You're like an Eskimo. What's an Eskimo? Mind your own business. What's soap you using? It smells lovely. You don't even wash in a bathroom. Bowls of water in the scullery and a face cloth that your mother made out of an old rag. We've got a guest room. You have. And there's oats in it. The place is like an old barn with chickens and a box in the window. Did you fix the lavatory chain yet? It's a wonder Baba can talk so fast. Yet she can't manage to write a composition and gets me to do it for her. Come on if you're coming. What's the dopey face for? Mama said she'd come and meet me. What are you, a great baby? So, what's the news? We've got a candlewick bedspread from America. <laughs> My mommy saw Big Ben on her honeymoon. Would you come in? Come in! What's he want? There you are, Kathleen. Your mama is gone on a little journey. Now, don't get excited. Jack is in charge, so have no fear. <laughs> Mama. Now, now. You'll be all right. You're to stay at Baba's house. The nerve. Don't upset yourself. I'll get you something to steady you. Keep crying and let's see what he gives us. <laughs> to your health. <gasps> Will Mama be long? Well, Hickey could tell you that if he's not snoring in the hay shed. Thanks very much, Mr. Holland. I'm going to ask you a favour. What about a kiss, guys? You're alone, Mr. Holland. Oh, oh, my toe. Sure, it's only a trap for the rodents. Get it off me. I slipped a bit of bacon in it this morning. There now. All well. So... About that little kiss. I'm too young. Touching, most touching. You have a lyrical trend. Why did you fall over? I stepped on a mouse trap. I'm coming home with you. I might get a few rings. You are not. Yes, I am. I'm going to get some flowers. My mother sent word over. Didn't have time to ask your mother, could I? My nose is getting wider. Have you noticed? Your nose has always been wide. You have a nose like a petrol pump. What do barbers have for their tea? Bread and tea, I suppose. Hair soup, you fool. <laughs> and what do they have for their dinner? Hair soup? Jugged hair, you idiot. God almighty, your house is a shambles. Hello, St. Anthony. Hello, St. Jude, patron saint of hopeless cases. There's packets of butter on the floor. Mama keeps it on the flag so it stays cool. Might as well have it towards your keep. Will we go upstairs and have a look at your mama's jewellery? Where did she get all her rings? When she was young, she went to America. Men gave them to her as presents. If you weren't so downright stingy, you'd give me one. They're mama's, I can't. They're mama's, I can't. Shh. I heard something. It's the dog. I better go down, he might eat the butter. Nice thing to come into an empty house. Where's your mother? I don't know. He's red in the face with drink. His hat pushed back on his head. I know he wants to hit someone. Answer my question. I don't know. 
Always avoid me. Always avoid your father. Where's your mother or I'd kick the pants off you? Hello, Mr. Brady. He takes his hands off me at once. He doesn't like people to think he can be brutal. Well, Baba, are you a good girl? Mrs. Brady's gone away. Her father isn't well. Kate's to stay with us. She'll stay and look after me. That's what she'll do. Oh, Mr. Brady, there's someone coming to look after you. Mrs. Burke from the cottages. As a matter of fact, we have to go down now and let her know that you're here. We'd better hurry. Here. Take this. That's for her keep. I don't take anything for nothing. Thanks very much. He's off his head. Let's run. Baba, give me back that pound. I'll settle up with your father myself. Mean devil. He owes my daddy 20 pounds. Evenings calm and gentle. Hickey's song drifting out across the field. Hello, darling. A stranger going along the road might think ours is a happy house. Hickey, Daddy came back and nearly killed me. Well, what did he want? A fight, as always. He's demented because mamma has gone away. Mean devil. He gave me a pound for her keep and then took it back again. If I had a pound for every penny he owes me, it's a tight-fisted article and no mistake. You won't go, will you, Hickey? If you go, I'll have no one. Uh, we'll cross that bridge. We have the whole summer ahead of us. And then you'll go. Well, a man needs to earn a crust. Birmingham is a great place for jobs. You have your pick. I got a scholarship today to the convent. Teach you now. Oh, mark my words, you'll be a toff with all that learning inside you. Would you come on? We'll be late for tea. Bye, Hickey. See you, darling. Don't think you can use our house like a hotel now, Mopey. And none of your eejizzy ways. We put our butter in a dish. It'll be like a palace to you. God, you're a drip. What's the matter with you? Everyone's leaving me. Ah, don't be such a fool. You'll be leaving yourself when school starts, and until then you should be thanking your lucky stars. What for? Aren't you moving from a right old mess of a tinker's house into a decent place in town with a bathroom? If you know how to use my words, you won't know yourself. Isn't that right? Martha! Martha! There you are. Take your coat off, Kate, and come into the kitchen. Do you call your mother by her first name? What do you expect me to call her, you great booby? Baba's mother wears red velvet shoes with little crusts of silver on them, and she drinks red wine. Sit down. Have a bit of this chicken, Kate. We're eating it now so the old fella won't get it. Have a wing. Thanks. Oh. Your mama called me. She's gone away for a few days. I'm sure she won't be long. Most nights, Baba's mother goes down to the Greyhound Hotel, dressed in a tight black suit, with nothing under the jacket, only a brassiere and a chiffon scarf knotted at her throat. There's trifle in the pantry. What'll I be when I grow up, Martha? Ugh, get out of this dive. Mm, be an actress. Something exciting. Mother used to be a ballet dancer. Isn't that right? But then she had to chuck it in. I was too tall. Too tall? Would you stick to the same old story? I could have married a hundred men. A hundred men cried at my wedding. Mm. <laughs> one was an actor. One was a poet. A dozen were in the diplomatic service. <laughs> you would have been living all over the world. Better than this dump. That's your father. Quick, the chicken, oh. quick. The chicken. Hide in the pantry. Yeah. What are you doing? Where's my teeth? Hello, hello, Mammy, Baba. Oh, in case. I kept your dinner hot for you in the oven. <clears throat> A job. 
A chop? I I thought we had chicken for dinner today. That half with Joan left the meat safe open when the dog ran off with us. Oh, stupid fool. Where is she? Gallivanting. And Kathleen, my lovely child, I wish that others would be as clever and gentle as you are, Kathleen. Baba sticks her tongue out behind Mr. Brennan's back and he turns around as if he has eyes in the back of his head. Baba? Yes, Daddy? Can you cook peas? No. Can your mother cook peas? I don't know. I want you to go to Corrigan Oh. People by the name of O'Brien. They have a half her dying. It's urgent. Can you cook peas, Mammy? They want you to go at once. They said you were late the last time and the horse died in the fall was Barn Lane. Oh, stupid, stupid, stupid. Well, I'll be off. What's doing going on about peas? Are we going to the play tonight, Martha? Of course we are. He can cook his own peas. I was eating peas when his thick lump of a mother was feeding them nettle tops, I ask you. Well, if Mr. Gentleman's there, I'm sitting next to him. No, you're not. I am. Anyway, he is some woman in Dublin. A chorus girl. Who told you that about Mr. Gentleman? You did. I did not. How dare you? How dare you say how dare you to me in my own house? The grandfather clock in the hall strikes five and the wind begins to rise. I'm thinking of Mama and hoping she's in out of it somewhere warm and dry. We set out for the town hall around seven. I put a damp cloth over Mr. Brennan's sandwiches. I feel sorry for him. He hadn't eaten anything and he has an ulcer. Uncouth. My mother is the best-looking woman in the town. Miss Murray Arty is two rows behind us with a bag of barley sugars, and then Jack Holland gets up onto the stage. And I wish Mama was sitting here next to me. It falls to me oh, to start us all off on a merry note. Isn't oh, that right? Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> so, so, I give you a song I learned at my poor old mother's knee. Ah, grandma. Have you ever seen her knees? They're like tree roots. <laughs> From single bell and bow Unto me pay attention Don't ever fall in love It's a devil's own invention For which I fell in love With a maiden so bewitching Miss Henrietta Bell Down in Captain Callie's kitchen At the interval they start selling raffle tickets We'll take four. If you win, it's mine, because you have no money. <laughs> and now, how about a song from the two young ladies at the front down there? Oh, hey. Yes! Oh. No! No! Come oh, on, what's the matter with you? Don't be a dopey fool. Oh, yes. oh, 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 Let's have a round of applause for the two beautiful girls. Hey, 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 hey. I'm going to sit down. No, you're not. Do you want to be my laughing stock? And what are you going to sing, girls? What do we sing, Kate? Do you have a, a nice hymn, maybe, from school? You start, Kate, and I'll join in. I don't know anything. <gasps> oh, I have it. Your favourite will sing the humours on me now. You love that one. Papa. Off you go, then, girls. Oh, as I oh, went out one go. morning. Come on, Kate. It be in the it month of May, a farmer and his daughter I spied upon me way. The girl sat down quite calmly to the milking of her cow, saying, I will and I must get married, for the humour is on me now. Someone comes in with a torch. Daughter, and holds your Sorry, you want to see Cousin Brady? Free and single and happy while you're young. Hold on, there are the girls. To bring Kate out. What? You heard me. Bring her out. Come on, Kate. When did it happen? No one knows exactly. Oh, God almighty. Oh, no. Oh, merciful saviour. They're all talking in the porch. Mr. Brennan and Hickey and Baba's mother is crying. Uh, Kathleen, come here to me. Your poor mother. She's had an accident. Where is she? Tell me. Tell her. It is better to tell her. Take me to Mama. We can't take you now. Not, not yet. Why? Why? I want to go to her. Oh, for God's sake, tell the girl. Would you shut up, Hickey? Come on, come on. With me into the car now. Come on, Kate. Baba, hurry up. 
tell me what happened? Please, please. Tom O'Brien went out on the lake and he's drowned in his boat. But what about Mama? They think she was with him and that he was taking her over to her cousin. After that, I hear nothing because you hear nothing or no one when your body cries and cries for the thing it's lost. Where are we going? We'll wait for news at the hotel. They put me sitting in one of the big leather armchairs, and the room is full up of people. Then Hickey comes to me. She's not dead. They're missing since five o'clock. They left to his shop at quarter to five. Poor Tom O'Brien had two bags of groceries. Here, Kate, Kate, uh, take, take a sip of brandy from this spoon now. Sorry, Kate, about making you sing that song. Will we bring you home now? I want to go to my mother. Darling, we're waiting for news from the barracks. The soldiers are out looking for... for your man. I never want to go home again. Never. You'll come back with us. I don't want to see Dad ever again. You won't see him. He's in hospital in Galway. He passed out when they told him. He was singing in a pub in Portumna when a guard went in to give him the news. Someone must have given Hickey a tumbler of whiskey, and he wasn't used to it. His eyes are popping out of his head. I'm never going home again, ever. Your mother was a true lady. Everyone loved her. I'll go to the barracks now and see if there's any news. There's nothing more any of us can do this minute. You'll stay with us tonight. You'll be all right. You won't be on your own. That boat was rotten. It was no better than a sieve. I always said it. I was always telling him that he wouldn't have it. Um, Can you come outside, Kathleen? It's confidential. Jack Holland leads me into the hallway away from everyone else. I couldn't do it. Do what? Give her the money. Have mercy on me, but my hands were tied. Mama asked you for money. So she could go away. And... I have done anything for her, anything. I've given her the, the moon and the stars. But the, the old woman owns everything. She was going away. She was a queen, a lady, stuck with... And you'll excuse me, Kathleen, stuck with that excuse for a man. She didn't deserve that. Poor soul. Poor, unfortunate soul. She was going to leave me behind. She, she wanted the best for you, darling. She was leaving me behind. You'll see when you get older. We have great intentions, but we're weak, darling. If only I'd been able to help your poor mama. I'd have done anything for her. Do you know that? Upstairs in the bedroom, two greyhounds moan, and suddenly I know there's nothing to be done about it. I have to accept that my mother is dead. No news, Kathleen. No news, love. Come, come on, come on, come on home to bed. Martha, Baba, will, will, will we go now? Come on. come on. Baba, go up and tidy your room. Kate can sleep in your bed tonight. Are more people going to come over? Not now. You won't hear anything until the morning. Go on up. Drink this now. What is it? It's a hot whiskey. It'll help you sleep. And Baba, get one of your nighties for Kate and a clean towel. Come and get in. I'll make room for you. I have to pray first. What are you praying for? I'm asking God to bring Mama back to life. Baba's bed is softer than mine. When I turn on my left side, she turns too. She puts her arm around my stomach and holds my hand. You're my best friend. Are you asleep? No. Are you afraid? Afraid of what? That she'll appear to us. I start to shiver. I want Mama more than anything in the world. But if the door was to open and she came in now, I'd have screamed. Knox. 
We want to get up and call for help, but we don't dare move. My mother's ghost might be outside on the landing. Oh. I've brought you a cup of tea. Is there any news? No, not yet. Are you sick, darling? You look very hot. Wait till I get that. Hello? Yes, I'll tell her. No, it's too bad. Well, I suppose that's that. What's happened? The soldiers are back. They haven't found anything. She didn't say they'd given up, but I know they have. Mama will never have a grave for me to put flowers on. Somehow she's more dead now than anyone I've ever heard of. Later, Martha sits with me and gives me a sip of her wine and reads me a story from a magazine. College girls are switching their allegiances from saddle shoes to white books, and it's a trend that's taken over every campus by storm. It rains all that day into the night. It's the last day of my childhood. Ever since Mama drowned, I'm living at Baba's house. And I go home in the daytime to get Dada's dinner and wash up. We have to send Mama's clothes in a parcel to Auntie Molly. Bullseye. Come in and sit down. Don't put your nose in them. Yes, I know they smell of Mama. Dada doesn't eat much anymore. And when he comes in from work, he goes straight to bed. I think he must cry there because it's too bright to sleep. Canteen. You up there? What is it? I'm in your room, Dada. Uh, there's a little matter you ought to know. This place has got to go. Go where? There was a bit of debt with one thing and another. It got bigger. Uh, I hadn't good luck with the horses. Uh, well, we didn't make ends meet. That's all there is to it. And who's buying it? What? Who's buying it, the house? The bank practically owns it. And who'll run it? Jack Holland will probably buy it. Jack Holland? All his palaver about kings and queens and him getting seven masses said for Mama. And where will you go? I'm all right. There's a little bit of land for myself and I'll be able to live at the gate lodge. And Hickey? He'll have to go. There's no more work for him. What are you doing? I'm sorting her clothes. Poor mama. The poor old creature. (laughs) I have to get a uniform before going away. School says I need shoes and six pairs of black stockings and a gym frock. And how much is that going to be? I don't know. Ten or fifteen pounds? I never deprived you of anything. Did I? Or your mama? No, did I? No. You only had to mention a thing and you got it. Isn't that right? Will you write to me when you go away? I will. Don't forget your poor father now, will you? He puts out his arm to draw me onto his knee. But I pretend not to know what he's doing and I go. Bab is having a birthday party today and I want to take her some cream to go with the jelly. Come on, Bullseye, and stop your dawdling. Passing the lower cornfield, I remember the jackdaws coming and Mama giving Hickey one of her beaded hats to put on the scarecrow. Oh, Mama, where are you? Where did you go? Bullseye comes a few more yards with me. But then he turns and goes back. He's loyal to Dada. Baba? 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 God almighty, I 
like a banshee. I thought you were some yahoo coming from the old fella. Are you having a nice time? We're having a whale of a time. I'm delighted you're not here. Go home and make a stir about it. I brought some cream for the party. Gimme. Now, be off, trash. Icky? Icky, where are you? In here. Where's in here? With the chooks. What are you doing? Carrying my initials, so there'll be traces of me when the historians come looking. Did Dada tell you there's no more work? I was going anyhow, as soon as you went off to school. Where will you go? To England. Are you lonesome? Oh, not at all. I have 20 quid a week and a mot in Birmingham. <laughs> Why did you come back? It's Baba. The way she talks to me. She's a ringing devil, that one. What'll you do with the beehive? Let it rot. Those bees are long gone. I'm off down to Mangans for a jar. Come on and walk with me. And don't grow up to be a snotty nose now when you go to that convent. I'm afraid of Baba. She makes so little of me. Huh. It's a kick in the backside she wants. I'd give her something to make her afraid. You know. Oh, I won't forget you. I'll send you a few bob from England. And you won't know yourself when you get away. We'll be setting off on our travels, the two of us. <laughs> oh, come here to me. We've got to forge ahead now. There's nothing else for it. Isn't that right? When I go to bed that night, I take out the three five-pound notes Daddy gave me that I hid in my vest. Tomorrow I'll go to Limerick and buy my school uniform. Next morning, I'm outside the gate waiting for the bus when Mr. Gentleman's car passes by. But then it turns around and comes back. Are you going somewhere, Kathleen? I'm off to Limerick, Mr. Gentleman, to buy my school uniform. Please, allow me to give you a lift. I sit on the black leather seat beside him, and my heart flutters. The moment I hear him speak, and the moment I look in his eyes, my heart always flutters. Hand me over those matches, will you? Are those cigars horrible? Not at all, here. Yeah. Try one. He takes the cigar out of his mouth and hands it to me. I'm thinking of his mouth, the shape of it, and the taste of his tongue. You're, you're a great girl, Kathleen. Thanks very much for the lift, Mr. Gentleman. What about lunch, Kathleen? Would you like to meet me? To have lunch? Yes, to have lunch. Yes, I would. Well, I see you at cruises, you know it? Yes. One o'clock? You won't forget? No, I won't forget. I go into the biggest shop on the main street. Mama always shopped here. I want a gym frock, please. Size? I don't know. Is your mother not with you? No. Here, try this on. You'll need room to go into it. After I've done my shopping, I weigh myself in the ladies' room because Mama always let me as a treat. A chart on the wall shows you how heavy you're meant to be if you know how tall you are. Seven pounds too light. In the basement, I buy presents for everyone. A scarf for Dada, a penknife for Hickey, a boat-shaped bottle of perfume for Baba, and pink hand cream for Martha. In the church, I light a candle and pray that Mama is in heaven, that Dada gives up drinking, and that Mr. Gentleman doesn't forget to come to the hotel at one o'clock. Kathleen! 
Why didn't you go inside? I didn't like to go in on my own. You know, men prefer to kiss young girls without lipstick. I got it in Woolworths. I wasn't thinking of kissing. I never kiss anyone. Never? No, nobody. Only Hickey. Shall we go in? He catches my elbow as we go into the hotel. My arms are thin and white and I'm ashamed of them. I'll have the Irish stew. No, please, you must not. Uh, we'll have the poussin with potatoes, green beans and a bottle of the saint Yes, sir. So, tell me about your day. Uh, I bought my school uniform and I walked around. That's all. Do you like this hotel? I've never had lunch in a hotel before. How do they clean the lamps and the ceiling? Do you know? I've never thought of that. When I come to town, I usually have to dine alone. To have company is a pleasure. Here, wine, sir. The waiter puts a little bit of wine in a glass and Mr. Gentleman tastes it. Hmm, good. You can leave it. Here, allow me. I had my confirmation pledge, but I was too ashamed to tell him. He's smiling at me all the time. It's a sad smile, and I like it. Good luck. I'm going away next week. To America? Oh, too bad we'll never meet one another again. His eyes meet mine for as long as I want. So you tell me that you've never kissed anyone? Only Hickey. He's been there since before I was born. Next time we have lunch, don't wear lipstick. I prefer you without it. All right. I was thinking... Perhaps you would like to go to the cinema before we go back? I would. Excellent. Then we will go. Now, drink some more wine. Afterwards, I have ice cream, and Mr. Gentleman has white cheese with green threads of mould in it. It smells like hickey socks. Not the new socks I bought him, but the old ones under his mattress. We'll have two in the balcony, please, and a box of those chocolates. Here, Kate. These are for you. Oh, thank you. No one's ever bought me chocolates with a ribbon before. I know things might not work out, but if you tried your best, would you do that for me? Do your best to give him a chance. You're not crying over a silly picture, are you? I don't want the horse to die. Do you know, I don't think he will. He has to win the race yet. He takes my hand and rests it in the lap of my blue dress. We lock our fingers. His hand is small and there are no hairs on it. Are you all right now? Yes. Isn't Elizabeth Taylor gorgeous? We drive back while it's still bright. The smell of hay comes in through the window. A woman is taking a herd of cows home for milking, and I catch him looking at me. Are you worried about being late? No. I can come back when I like. I thought so. You're a free spirit, Kathleen. It's only Baba who'll wonder where I am. And will you tell her? I I don't know. I see. I suppose you're great friends. We've known each other since we were five. Friendship is a wonderful thing. To have someone to confide in. When I lived in Paris, I had the greatest friends. Is Paris wonderful? It's perfection, Kathleen. Have you ever been to a place like that, somewhere that exceeds your expectations? Mama says New York was like something in a fairy tale. (laughs) That's right. That's how Paris is. Is that where you're from? Not far from there. I'd like to see Paris. And Dublin. Dublin has the biggest shops in Ireland. Will we go? Now? Well, perhaps not now, but one day. We stop and he looks at me. You're the sweetest thing that's ever happened to me. He squeezes my hand before I get out of the car. My soul is alive with enchantment. Something I've never known before. It's the happiest day of my life. Goodbye, Mr. Gentleman. He's my new god, with his eyes that make me feel sad for every woman who hasn't known him. 
What the hell are you mooning about? Brought you a present from town. Oh, give, me. give it here. You're the sweetest thing that's ever happened to me. It was like having a precious stone in my pocket. And I had only to say the words to feel it all over again. Did you not have someone look at you when you bought that gym frock? The woman in the shop said I grow into it. They'll all think you have worms. You'll be all right, Egypt. I don't care. Do you want your present? What is it? Perfume. It's all right. <sighs> you are very happy with yourself. Hurry up and get into bed. Do you want to keep the whole house up? I want to sit here all night and dream. I think you've gone mad. What's happened to you, anyhow? Love. Who's the fool? You wouldn't know. Is it Declan? Nonsense. Hickey? No. Tell me. I can't. Tell me or I'll tickle <gasps> it out of you. All right. All right. It's Mr. Gentleman. Not on your life. It's a brazen lie. It's not a lie. He gave me chocolates and took me to the pictures. He told me I was the sweetest thing that's ever happened to him. He said the colour of my hair was wonderful and, and my skin was like a peach in the sunlight. He didn't say anything about my skin or my hair exactly. But once I start telling lies, I can't stop. Go on. Tell me more. You won't tell anyone. You won't tell anyone, Baba. No. Only Mrs. Gentleman. Don't tell a single solitary person. No, only Mrs. Gentleman and Martha and Daddy and your old fella. I was only joking. I never met him. I was only pulling your leg. He just gave me a lift to Limerick, that's all. Really? Well... Martha and Daddy and I are having dinner with the gentlemen tomorrow night and I'll mention it to them. No, don't. Don't tell. Turn off the light, would you? I want to go to sleep. Wait, I have something for you. Baba is always trying to get Mama's rings. The ones she brought back with her from New York. But there's one ring she likes best of all. It's the black one. The diamond. Your favourite. Go on and try it on. Hmm. I don't know how your mama got these rings on her fingers. She always had hands like a fish wife. She was young then. So, you won't tell? I'm worn out. Don't be keeping me awake now with your fidgeting. The next night, they go out to dinner. And all I can think about is Baba sitting at the big table and telling everyone about how Mr. Gentleman took me to the pictures. And Mrs. Gentleman going mad. And Mr. Brennan thinking I'm terrible and saying I can't live in their house anymore and making me go back to Dada and being in disgrace forever. You're not in bed yet? It's gone midnight. You didn't tell, did you? Tell? Oh, no, I didn't tell. Old Mrs. Gentleman would be here with a hatchet if I told. But Mr. Gentleman and I were having a stroll in the garden and I mentioned you and he said, oh, that little one, she suffers greatly from her imagination. He didn't say that. Oh, yes. He was linking me round, showing me the flowers, asking me this and that, imploring me to play chess with him. And I mentioned your name and he said, oh, let's not discuss her. So I dropped the subject. Oh. We were out there a hell of a long time. Old mad gentleman had to stick her head out the window to call us back in. I can't bear it. I can't bear it. All I can think is that I'll never be able to look him in the face again. And I gave her mamma's best ring. I decided never to speak to Baba ever again as long as I live. Hello? Oh, hello. Oh, thank you, I am. Oh, that's very good of you. I know it's come round quickly, hasn't it? I'll call her. Kate? Kate? What is it? Mr Gentleman's on the phone for you. He wants to wish you good luck before you go. To go down and talk to him is all I want. But now he's ringing to tell me how vulgar and disgusting I've been, making up what happened on our day out together. I can't endure it. Tell him I'm out and I'll ring him. But he knows you're here. I can't talk to him now. I can't. 
I'm sorry, but she must have gone out. I will do, and you. All the best. Didn't want to talk to him. What did he say? He's going to Paris on a trip, so he won't be here when you go. To Paris? I think about girls in sin at once. How could he? Some relative of his is dying. Still, Paris. Oh, can you imagine it? I'd be off in two shakes if anyone asked me. I didn't see Mr. Gentleman again that summer because we left for the convent three days later. What are you up to? Stealing the family silver? <laughs> it's my doll's house tea set. It's the only thing I'm taking with me. Oh, those dolls must be the size of mice. Oh, you get nothing inside that cup. Mama gave it to me the year I realised about Santa Claus and Baba told me. And every time I lost a tooth, she'd put it in the cup and the next morning there'd be a sixpence waiting for me. <laughs> well, I make her something to eat. Dad is coming with us in the car tomorrow. I don't want him to. Offer it up as penance. I wish I didn't have to go. Have you not thought how pleased your mama would be to see you off and out here and making your way in the world? If she had a grave, I could go and talk to her. What? What's stopping you talking to her? You can talk to her whenever you want. I hate Baba. We're not speaking. It'll get better. Isn't that right? So what else can it do? Now stick it out. Will you do that for me? Now, I'm making us some tea and we'll have bread and jam. Kathleen! Hello, Mr Holland. I can see you're about in your preparations. I have to get back home. We're off to the new school tomorrow. Oh, I know. Isn't it general knowledge? Flying the nest. I wanted to tell you, Kathleen, there isn't a day goes by when your poor mamma isn't on my mind. She is a constant presence. Is it true you had seven masses said for her? I sent money to a special order of priests in Dublin for a bouquet of masses. They might be of help to her. Oh, she was the best of souls. A queen amongst women. I often think I glimpse her, and then I feel the loss of her all over again. I have to be going. Oh, I have this for you. What is it? A propelling pencil for the new school. Who knows what you might write with it? Sunset and evening star, and one clear call for me. And may there be no moaning at the bar when I put out to sea. As I walk away, the sun is falling sideways on the fields and I can feel Jack Holland still watching me until I come to the bend in the road and I'm alone again. <laughs> the last view I have of our village the day we leave is rain. Goodbye, home. <laughs> this is a good car now. How many miles do you get to the gallon, Doc? Dada calls Baba's father, Doc, and lights two cigarettes at a time. Here you are, Doc. <laughs> I think you were emigrating to America, not just off to school. So we'll visit you every few Sundays, won't we, Doc? I couldn't tell him I don't care if you never visit me. I'll be happier in the convent than anywhere you are, coaxing a fire with damp sticks and worrying about the smell of whiskey on your breath. Now, you two must make up over whatever is going on between you. Be off, trash. She says it to me between her teeth so no one else can hear. a drink, Doc. We don't need to break our backs. Yes, let's let's get the girls lemonade. Well, Doc, a whiskey, is it? I'm trembling because of what Dada might drink himself. And for you, ma'am? Baba's mother hates being called ma'am because she thinks it makes her old. Gin? I'll have uh, lemonade, I suppose. He looks at me. He wants me to think he's being good. I'll have a grapefruit. A grapefruit? She only wants to be different. There's a nice fire going and I hate leaving it. Dada! What? Should they need to know we're here? What time do nuns go to bed? Oh, we'll be all right. I can hear someone coming now. And after we've dropped the girls off, we can go back to the hotel and the dock and rest themselves. 
God bless you. You're very welcome. She's the tallest nun I've ever seen. And when she shakes us by the hand, her skin's cold. Now, Kathleen, try to behave yourself. Oh, now look after yourself, girls. Crabbe's mother puts two coins into my hand. Thanks. They'll settle down in no time. Good night now, and safe journey. And our parents go. All I can think of is them having tea and a mixed grill back at the hotel in front of that lovely fire. Well now, if you follow me, you must have your collation with the other girls. Sit down here and Sister Ignatius will pour you some tea. Wait till you see. It's like tar. I'm Cynthia. Kate. I'm Barbara. Did you two come in together? We live in the same town. Take some bread. It'll be all gone. Is this all we're getting? It's grey. Those are the lay nuns. They do all the cooking and cleaning. They have no money or education when they come here. The other nuns are the choir nuns. You better eat up quick. You have to say the rosary in a minute. <laughs> The singing is so beautiful it makes me think of Mama asking me if I'll be a nun when I grow up. Everyone make room, please. Sister Marker likes to beat you with a strap. A very warm welcome to all our girls and especially to our new girls joining us for the first time. A moment of reflection to remind everyone of convent rules. Silence in the dormitory and at breakfast. Shoes to be taken off before going into the dormitory. No food to be kept in presses in the dormitory. Bed within 20 minutes after you go upstairs. Now, will all the girls who have milk at night put up their hands? I put up my hand because I have a bad chest, so Dada has to pay two pounds a year. Eat it. <laughs> and then we go to bed early. Now, girls, the new girls won't know this, but our convent has always been proud of our modesty. Our girls, above all else, are good, wholesome and modest. One expression of modesty is the way a girl dresses and undresses. In an open dormitory like this, girls are requested to dress and undress under the shelter of their dressing gowns. Girls should face the foot of the bed while doing this, as they might surprise each other if they face the side of the bed. Trying to undress under a dressing gown isn't easy. It helps if you stoop very low. You look like one of the seven dwarves. Mother of God, this is hell. I won't last a week. Are you hungry? I'd eat a young child. It's the first words we've spoken. I have some brew cake. Hickey wrapped it up for me. Mm. That was the best bit of fruit cake in the whole of Ireland. Mm. What's the meaning of this? We were lonely, sister. Loneliness is no excuse for disobedience. Go back to your bed, Barbara Brennan. Yes, sister. And what's this? A doll's tea service, sister? I brought it because my mother died. Sentimental, childish conduct. And with that, she takes it off me and goes. That's what happens on our first night in the convent. I get into the icy sheets. The whole dormitory is crying. Then the girl next to me puts an iced bun on my pillow. I give her a piece of cake and we shake hands. Four-minute mind. Silence, please. <laughs> no attention to that bruised boy, girls. And star jumps, girls. Back to your spot. Star I've got an extra dollop of marmalade for you, Dopey Face. I've got a place for you here, Case. Go on, then. 
Or your friend will have a blue fit. Come and sit with me. Cynthia's tall with yellow hair and a bust. A thing no other girl in the convent dares to have. She's different because she's half Swedish and her mother's a convert. Do you want to make some Christmas cards later? I've got three kinds of glitter from home. Kate's not good at handicrafts. You should have seen the crib she made in her last school. It was like the baby Jesus was born in the back of a garage. Yes, I'd like that. Thanks, Cynthia. I thought you could do the copper plate writing. You're much better than me. Cynthia's always saying nice things about me. It makes me feel warm inside. Silence! This morning I shall be reading from the life of St. Teresa. As you know, St. Teresa often had her faith sorely tested. I bet she never had to do a run on the spot. One day, while working in the laundry, a nun, who did not like St. Teresa, splashed the dirty water from the pail where they were washing the handkerchiefs all over poor St. Teresa. I think I'm going to be sick. But did she wipe her face? No, because she submitted to the mortification of the flesh. Soap gets in your eyes. (laughs) Get us killed. Hurry along now, girls. Don't be late for class. I'd rather be a Protestant than have to carry on with this malarkey every day. Protestants have convents too. Not like this jail. Kathleen Brady. Yes, sister? Come in here to me this minute. Sit you down. Yes, sister. Your maths homework was handed to me today. I'm sorry, sister. Did you copy this from one of the older girls? No, sister. Then I'm at a loss entirely. You're ahead of some of the brighter girls in your class. Where did you get to be so good at the sums? I used to help my mother with the housekeeping. And you're a scholarship girl, is that right? Miss Moriarty put me up for that or I'd never have got it. Obs. I, myself, once worked in a chemist's shop. Did you, sister? Pharmacology. Whereas physics might be more for you if you put your mind to it. Oh, Please, I'd be no good at that. I nearly set the table on fire with the Bunsen burner. You have a responsibility to your brain. Not everybody has one, you know. A brain, sister? A brain is very like a bicycle. If you don't make use of it, the next thing you know, the whole thing is rusted beyond repair. Do you have a bicycle, sister? The bicycle was a metaphor. You know what a metaphor is? It is a thing which stands for another thing, like saying the sky is like lead or the sea like a... Sheet of silk, sister. Yes. I'll be keeping an eye on your homework, Kathleen Brady. I'll be expecting effort. Where would the Romans have got without effort? Nowhere, sister. Not a single road would have been built. Now. I have my readings to gather. Don't be distracting me anymore. No, sister. Thank you, sister. The notes written in purple ink To my lovely friend from her loving Cynthia Let me see Give it back To my lovely friend from her loving Cynthia That sort of mush gives me acidosis Give it to me Just because her mother's from Denmark Sweden I don't care where it is You'd think she was the Queen of Sheba She knows all kinds of interesting things Sweden has three species of snakes I'm delighted I'm going to walk backwards today when we have to go out for our ramblings. As a protest. All right. Bye. So, see you later. Going round to guess what animal this meat came from. I can't. Cut it up. Siobhan McFadden said it was rhinoceros. (laughs) Siobhan McFadden's a scream. (laughs) But then I said she was lucky because we ended up with the bit he sat down on for the last five years. What's going on down there? I just swallowed the wrong way, sister. Oh, I'll hit you on the back. (laughs) Stop that at once. I was only trying to help. I can't eat any of this. I can't swallow it. We can smuggle it out and throw it in the lake when we go out for our walk. I'm just about to put the grisly lump into the envelope Bab is holding out when... Don't! She'll ask you where it's gone so quickly. And you know she searches pockets. Kathleen Brady, why aren't you eating your cabbage? There's a fly in it, sister. It was a slug, really, but I didn't like to hurt her feelings. Eat your cabbage this minute. Think of the destitute poor who'd do anything for cabbage to have with their dinner. 
She stands over me while I put it in my mouth and swallow it whole. I think I'm going to be sick. When she walks up the other way, we put the rest of the meat inside Baba's jumper. Do I look sexy? It makes her chest bulge out to one side. You look like Rita Hayworth. I know. I'm the spit of her. (laughs) After tea, we go out for our enforced walk. We're not the only girls throwing parcels of meat into the pond. I have done the deed. We've got to come up with an escape plan. There's no way I can stick it out in this hellhole. Hello. Cynthia, fancy meeting you here. The girls back there are having a truth game about who's got boyfriends. Do you have a boyfriend back home? I'm thinking of driving in the car with Mr. Gentleman and him holding my hand. Have you? Oh, yes. He's terrific. He's 19 and he works in a garage. He has his own motorbike. We go to dances and everything on it. Are you fast? What's fast? It's a woman who has a baby quicker than another woman. Is it, Cynthia? Mm. In a way. If only Mr. Gentleman would come in his car and take me away from here. And we'd drive down country roads with fuchsia hedges on either side. How can you stand it with that individual trailing around after you every minute of the day? Who? Who do you think? Cynthia. She's not giving us a minute's peace. Sister Margaret's gone upstairs because one of the younger girls says there's a rat in the hopper. Do you want to my seed cake, won't be fit? I'll be in in a minute. Suit yourself. There might be none left by then. What's it like? Having no mother? Lonely. Do you go and visit her grave? She doesn't have a grave. She drowned in a lake. Who looks after you at home then? Your father. He works away. I stay with Baba's family. Do you like Baba then? We've known each other since we were five. Do you like me? Yes. I think you're wonderful. Why? (laughs) You're clever. And you have lovely hands. Do I? I have hands like flippers. You do not. My brother says I can always live at the zoo if they need a few extra seals. (laughs) Can I kiss you? Yeah. After that first time, Cynthia kisses me every night. We would have been killed if we'd been found out. I saw the two of you. What you were doing. Don't be cross, Baba. I don't know what you see in her. She's the right Egypt. All those things I said I told Mr. Gentleman about you. It was only a joke. I was only pretending. I never know when to believe you. I never said a word to him. And you didn't go for a long walk together in the garden talking about me? I told you. It was a joke. I'm not so afraid of Baba anymore. I can make my own friends now and we both know it. Sister Frances Ignatius said there was a hamper in the porch this morning for the Ryan girls. Their mother lives in Dublin. She owns a hotel. They both talk at the same time. They give me a pain in the head. Have a sweet mopey face. Aren't they Una's chocolates? It's all right. She gave them to me. Would you like an oat cake, sister? Thank you, Cynthia. Now, get ready to clear away, girls. It's nearly time to go up to the dormitory for your letters. <gasps> Why does she put the oat cakes in her pocket? They like to starve themselves and offer it up. Do you think you have anything in the post case? I don't know. I was hoping, like anything, there might be a letter from Mr. Gentleman. If Baba hadn't said those things, maybe he still thought about me. If I get anything nice to eat, we can share it. Thanks, Cynthia. Martha might have sent me a fruit cake. That's nice. But they might be hard to post or the postman might have eaten it. Una Flanagan. Siobhan Hogan. Mary Marina Kennedy Connolly. How can anyone go through life with a name like that? Kathleen Brady. Who are these men writing you letters? Oh, sister, let me see. Isn't that your father's handwriting? Yes. And this one is from Hickey, who helped us on the farm. 
Oh, and this one is from my mother's friend, Mr. Holland. How many letters does a girl need? Will you answer me that? Lone Ryan. Dada says he's all right in the gatehouse and bullseye misses Eileen me. Eileen Quinlan. Is that it? He won't be winning any prizes for composition then. Barbara Brennan. <gasps> I'm here, sister. <clears throat> Mickey's in Birmingham. Look, he sent me a five shilling postal order. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, Hickey. His writing's like an embassy. <laughs> Who's your letter from? Martha, you missed the play in the town hall. Mr. Curran fell through the stage playing Moses, which was the best part in it. Daddy ran over a creature on the road and even the butcher didn't know what it was. No money. Jack Collins bought her old house. But they're not living in it. Where are you going? I said I'd see Cynthia to make our cards. That'll give me a chance to read my other letter then. What other letter? Some things are private, if you don't mind. Is it from home? From a man, friend. Someone we both know. Someone who takes holidays abroad. Mr. Gentleman. I promise to keep our correspondence private. Show me the letter. I said it was private. He's been in France, but he'll be home for Christmas. Did he say anything about me? He's very busy with work and travelling. He doesn't have time to ask about every other person. It's not true. Why would he write a letter to you and not to me? Because we're great friends. Sometimes we have a little joke about what you said, pretending that he said all those silly things about you, about your beautiful eyes and all that guff. He thinks that was a scream. You said you made that up, that you never told him. I was trying to make you feel better. I don't believe you. It makes no difference to me. <laughs> if there really is a letter, show it to me. Don't be annoying me. When we go home for Christmas, I'll ask him. I'll go on and do. See if I care. All those weeks and nothing from him. Why hadn't he written when he could go to the post office whenever he liked? Did he ever think of me now? And suddenly I understand that maybe he wishes he'd never liked me. And that I might never see him again. <laughs> 